SSRF stands for Server-Side Request Forgery. It's a vulnerability that allows an attacker to have a server-side application send requests on their behalf, usually to internal resources that are not externally available. It's really important to be able to find and exploit SSRF because in recent years, we've seen more and more of these vulnerabilities arise. And you might ask, well, why is that? I suspect it's due to the increase of cloud adoption and the increased use of microservice architecture and increased complexity in web applications. So let's quickly walk through a theoretical example before we jump into a hands-on lab. So in this example, we are going to have the server make requests to itself via the loopback address 27.001. So we have an appointment booking application. The attacker, whilst in the user context, can invoke a request that gets an up-to-date list of available booking slots. The request contains the payload with the booking information request filters such as the date range, and a legitimate request looks something like this. So to exploit this, we simply intercept the request, drop in our own payload, and then forward the request on. This request, instead of making a call to http api.bookingexample.com, calls the admin page on the loopback address. Because the request is coming from the server itself, which it trusts, it serves up the page without complaint. So, Going back to our definition, the application we're exploiting is making requests, in this case to itself, on our behalf. So let's jump into a hands-on demo. A really nice example is from Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. Now, if you've not seen the Web Security Academy before, then I highly recommend you check it out. It's a fantastic resource and one of my favorites. It's also free, so no excuses really. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to come to the basic SSRF against the local server lab. You just click access the lab and here we are. So first thing we're gonna do is I know that this already exists. So I'm just gonna to go to slash admin and it actually gives us a hint here. So the admin interface only available uh, is only available if logged in as an administrator or if requested from the loopback. So this is obviously the hint for the SSRF challenge. So we're gonna come into a product here. So I'm just gonna come down and we're gonna look at the Vintage Neck Defender. I definitely need one of those in my life. And here we can see there's a check stock button. So before we hit this, I'm just gonna switch on my proxy and then I'm gonna hit check stock and it comes back with 734 units. So if I switch over to Burp Suites and I come to my proxy, HTTP history, here we can see the request. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit easier for you to see. You can see that the post request went to product slash stock, uh, product slash stock, and then you can see the payload here. Now, if we just highlight this, this is encoded, so we can just send this to decoder, click on decoder, decoder's URL, and then it's a little bit easier to read. So it's sending a request, our, our payload is sending a request to stock.welike2shop.net, port 8080, product stock check. And it's sending the two parameters, product ID and store ID, which are both one. So if we come back to our proxy, and then you can either click Control R or right click and send to repeater, we can come into the repeater and we can start to play with this request. So the easiest way to get started is if we just go and click send straight away, it comes back and it comes back with 243. Interesting that the result is different already. So it seems like it's just giving us a random result each time, but maybe on a real life shopping application, this would be slightly more consistent. And all we're going to do is instead of grabbing uh, data from this endpoint, which is from the stock.we like to shop uh, .net endpoint, we're just going to go http slash slash 127001 slash admin, because admin is the page that we want to request. I'm just going to URL encode the request to make sure that there aren't any issues delivering our payload. So I just hit control U. You can also right click and somewhere in this long list is a URL in code. Um, I can't see it. Ah, convert selection uh, URL, it's already encoded. So here it comes up with decode, but you can URL encode like this. And then we hit send. 
And you'll see that the response is very different. So we get a HTTP OK. And if we scroll down, we can see some things that might indicate we're actually on the admin panel. Now, if we click render, we come to here, we can see that we have indeed accessed the admin panel of the application. So that's a hands-on example of server-side request forgery. So what else can we achieve with this kind of vulnerability? Well, if we specify a port number, we may be able to start doing an internal scan and seeing what other services are available. So 8081, 8082, 8083. Obviously, this is easier to script, or you can make use of Burp's intruder to do this. Aside from this, we can also look to use other schemes. So we might want to go for file, for example, or bar, or gopher, or data. And in the file case, a really simple example is just requesting etc passwd, for example. So there's quite a lot to this vulnerability once we start to scratch the surface. So how do we detect SSRF? Well, thorough enumeration of the target application is the key to finding any vulnerability. Whether or not you have the source code, mapping all of the endpoints, understanding the functionality, and making all of the requests you can, all whilst capturing this in your proxy, is going to get you off to a good start. Now, potential SSRF vulnerabilities can sometimes be spotted just by looking for URLs within the requests. For example, as a parameter in the URL of a GET request, or the body of a POST request, like in our previous example. It's also worth looking out for partial URLs, such as slash booking in a request, rather than the full URL. Now, it's worth noting here that just because you see a URL and you can tamper with it, doesn't mean that there's a vulnerability. Sometimes this is intended functionality and it's implemented securely. Therefore, the only time we should be reporting this as a vulnerability is when we can find an impact. For scanners and fuzzers, regardless if they are open source or paid for, I recommend using them as part of your toolkits. Try them, see if they add value to your workflow, but these can be great for scale and also good sanity check during your testing. For server-side request forgery though, we can sometimes run into issues where we have blind SSRF. If you're relying on a scanner, and let's say it's not using out-of-band checks, you're definitely going to miss out on some key results. We'll do a separate video on blind SSRF where we dive much deeper, but to give a very quick overview, basically, blind server-side request forgery is where the response of our payload is not presented back to us in the application's response. Obviously, trying to leak sensitive information this way can be very difficult or even impossible in this situation. Therefore, we need some out-of-band service that we control that is internet-facing to verify that our payload worked. Some ways of doing this that jump to mind are Burp Collaborator, which is probably the easiest way to get up and running, webhook.site, which is great if you just want to listen for incoming requests, no sign-up or anything needed, you can just browse to the website and copy and paste the URL, or you can just spin up a server on AWS with free tier EC2 and use that. And then you have full control over what you want the interaction to look like. Now, I'm not affiliated with any of these. They're just things that I like to use in my day to day. So that's it for this video. If you want to stay up to date on exploiting blind server-side request forgery and bypassing common defenses, then make sure you like and subscribe or just leave a comment if there's some other attack that you want us to cover. Catch you next time.